What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna be doing another Q&A video where I answer some of the questions you guys submitted to me. And also if you guys haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more pharmacy content. Now to the rest of the video. So I wrote down some of the questions I'm gonna be answering, so let's get right into it. The first question is, which area of pharmacy do you struggle with the most? So as a pharmacy student and even as a pharmacist, to this day, I still struggle with brand names. And brand names are not like very common top 200 medications, like obscure brand names. Because when I was a first year pharmacy student, I thought like, oh my gosh, how many of you remembering so many brand names of medications, let alone a lot of generic names of medication, how many of you remembering so many brand names? And to be honest, I don't know all the brand names. I have to, a lot of times I have to look it up. And the good thing about technology is there's always a computer or a phone that I can look up. But to this day, I still struggle with brand names. Um, but it's not that big of a deal because it comes like practice makes perfect. So the more I hear the brand name, the more likely I am to remember it. So as I keep practicing more, I've been picking up brand names more and more and more. And it's a far, it's a part of, uh, it's an area of pharmacy where I do struggle with. However, I don't personally think it's that big of a deal because it's just, it's very easy to find the answer to it. There's no thinking process to it. There's no real brain power to memorize a brand name. It takes more to understand how a medication works than to memorize brand names. And that's what I did mainly at school. I tried focusing on understanding concepts rather than memorizing medication names that I knew I was gonna forget a week later. So that's the area of pharmacy I do struggle with the most, but I do make an uh, active effort to improve on that part of pharmacy. The second question is, what was the most difficult part of pharmacy school? Now, I actually don't remember if I answered this question in my previous Q&A video. If I did, then I wonder if my answer would be different. But the one I could think about on top of my head without was the most difficult part of pharmacy school was time management. So I personally, I think I have pretty good time management. I'm a, I'm a pretty organized guy. I have like an actual planner where I jot down things I have to get done throughout the day and throughout the week. But for pharmacy school, I don't think pharmacy school is that hard individually if you compartmentalize everything. So in my, what I tell younger students and like colleagues of mine that are interested in becoming a pharmacist and going through pharmacy school is that I tell them that in my opinion, pharmacy school is not as hard as getting an undergraduate degree in like, for example, biology, chemistry, or any of those uh, hard science classes. In my opinion, pharmacy is very um, doable in the sense that if you have good time management, you could get everything done because each class of pharmacy that you take, whether it's a pharmaco economics or PK or any of those pharmacy classes, they're difficult. I'm not saying they're easy, but if you compare it to like an organic chemistry, a microbiology, a general biology, those classes are a little more deeper and a little more uh, difficult versus classes in pharmacy. The caveat is that in pharmacy, you have a lot at once. So for example, in undergrad, I went one semester, I took uh, calculus, I took chemistry, and took, I took biology. I took three classes, but each class was relatively really difficult. So that was a really hard um, uh, time in terms of um, understanding the material and time managing. However, in pharmacy, you have maybe like five to six classes, but those five to six classes are not as hard as those three classes I just mentioned, in my opinion. So what you have to do is basically make sure to manage your time properly with amongst those like five pharmacy classes, plus like your extracurricular, your volunteer, your clinical work. Pharmacy is more about time management than actual um, difficulty of the actual course. Because if I divide each course into like its own section, each none of the sections are as hard as like organic chemistry, but if you had all of them up at the same time, that might be a harder thing to manage than three really hard classes on undergrad. So in terms of what was the most difficult part of pharmacy school, my answer would be time management in order to get everything done um, and get everything done effectively and properly. So if someone has really bad time management, then they would struggle way more in pharmacy school than they did in undergrad where you have um, especially if you're in a semester system in undergrad, you have way more um, leeway in terms of like flexibility of like uh, how much time you have to like procrastinate and get things done. Whereas in pharmacy, you have relatively no time to procrastinate. So to sum it up, is the most difficult part of pharmacy school is time management. And if you guys have any question on that, that rant I just did, let me know in the comment section below. The next question is, 
What's something you would tell younger Edgman in pharmacy school now that you have experience as a pharmacist? So what would I tell myself is not to worry too much about grades. So, so the way I did pharmacy school, I actually am very happy with the way pharmacy school went for me. I mean, I, pre, I focus on things that I want to focus on. I basically did what I want to do and I'm doing what I want to do right now. So I'm pretty much very happy. So I wouldn't change too much of what I did in pharmacy school. But what I would say to younger Edgman, especially younger Edgman in his first year or first semester in pharmacy school, is not to worry at all about grades. So what happened with me is the first semester I went to pharmacy school, we basically all got scared, in my opinion, thinking that we're going to like fail because it's so hard and like you're not going to pass your classes. So I had, um, I was afraid that I wasn't going to pass. So what I would do, I really would study a lot and I actually did really, really well. And actually in my opinion, I think I did too well in the sense of like, I don't like studying too much and getting really high grades because I always like preach this to like my colleagues. I, I say, when you study too much and get like a 99% or 98%, you cut, you had a lot of margin to get like a 91%, 85%, and you use that, diff, that time you save not studying and doing something else, whether it's doing volunteer work, clinical work, networking, um, there's always, a cost to everything that you do, in my opinion. So what I would tell younger Edgman, especially in his first uh, semester, first year okay, but mainly first semester is not to worry or stress too much about a uh, failing or not getting good grades because in my opinion, graduate schools that have a lot to do with clinical aspect with working with patients such as pharmacy school, optometry school, uh, dental school, I don't think these classes are I don't think these curriculums are good in the sense of like having a A, B, C, D, F system because what I think it does is for some students, it makes them really fixate on the grade and not fixate on, on the actual content. So for example, like let's say you're thinking objectively and practically, does someone getting a 91% in a class and that's technically an A versus someone who gets an 88% in a class and that's a B. Does, is it to say that the person who got 91% is a better practitioner and whatever their field they're in, I would say no, because I don't think that grades matter. I think grades make a difference in terms of if you understand the concept, you understand the content and you're able to function properly as a healthcare practitioner, that's all that really matters. Getting A or B doesn't really make any difference practically. So what the problem I see in, in students is that they mainly fixate on the number of like getting that A versus like understanding the material. So like if you, for the for example, if you sacrifice going to a clinical event um, and to actually get hands-on experience or get networking experience or any sort of like positive practical experience, instead to like study more and get like a really really high A just because you want to keep your GPA at a high rate, I think that's a very flawed way of thinking of going about graduate schools that involve like working with patients because it takes your eye away from the real prize. And so that's what I'll tell younger Edwin that in his first um, year and mainly in his first semester to not worry about grades, not worrying about filling, just focus on understanding the material, focus on being a, the best pharmacist you could be rather than focusing on the how high your GPA could be. Um, but throughout my years of pharmacy school, I, that's, I, I adopted that mentality and I don't regret it at all. Like there's some classes where I purposely got a B in because I'm like, you know what? I want, instead of studying for this class, I want to go do this volunteer work. I want to go work here. I want to go um, do this clinical event. And um, I think it takes a lot more um, courage to make a sacrifice in that sense for the greater overall good of who you want to be or, or what kind of healthcare provider you want to be or how good you want to be as a practitioner. So I think in that sense, that's the best advice I would give to younger Edgman. And also that's the best advice I give to everyone who's watching to, to actually wants to become a pharmacist or wants to become a dentist or whatever healthcare field you guys want to go into focus on what actually matters and that's being understanding the material and being able to perform practical things that provide value to patients or um, an employer i just realized how long this video is getting and i don't like get making my videos too long so i'll stop the questions here i'll be sure to make another next uh q a video i'll post it on instagram edgy edge official so you guys could ask questions and I could uh, make another Q&A video part three. But I did hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I hope you guys learned and got motivated or maybe like got some insight on pharmacy school. Um, if you guys have any other questions, you guys could always um, comment in the comment section below. Uh, follow me on Instagram at edgyedgeofficial. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.